To test the RF conformance of 5GNR base stations, 3GPP has defined signals, so-called test models, with a fixed configuration to carry out signal quality and spectrum measurements like error vector magnitude and spectrum emission mask or adjacent channel leakage power ratio, short ACLR. Test models are defined for both frequency ranges, FR1 and FR2, for different numerologies and different bandwidths. Each test model is defined for a specific test aspect. The test model that I have preloaded here on my SMW200A vector signal generator is test model 3.1 that is being used for testing the error vector magnitude. So if I go into the 5GNR personality on the signal generator, I will see here's the button test model. It's already preloaded. Uh, 3.1, like I said, FDD 100 megahertz and 30 kilohertz. If I want to choose another one, I just simply press it and uh, pick the one that I want. Um, for the FR1 frequency range or the FR2 frequency range. And as soon as I switch it on, the signal is calculated and loaded. I set my frequency, in this example, 3.5 gigahertz because it's the FR1 uh, test model and my power level, and I'm ready to go. The next step would be to configure the FSW. That's the signal and spectrum normalizer down here. Also here, Roden Schwartz has implemented all test models for FR1 and FR2 according to the latest specification. You see here my 100 megahertz signal in my spectrum view. The only thing that I have to do is choose mode and then pick 5GNR. So the 5GNR option is loaded. And the next step is then I could do the manual configuration of the signal. Uh, but the easiest way is basically choose signal description, um, choose test models. And then you can see here clearly all the test models. And for simplicity, we basically can look for our particular model to choose, 3.1 for the FR1 frequency range. My duplexing method was FDD. And the bandwidth that I'm looking for is 100 megahertz. So now I could also use the subcarrier spacing. As you can see here, there's two models, one for 30 and one for 60 kilohertz. The model I choose for my demonstration is 30 kilohertz, so I'm basically uh, choosing that one, and as soon as it's being done, the configuration is loaded to the FSW. As we can see, we get the constellation diagram, we get the EVM over subcarrier, but uh, something um, caught our eye immediately, especially if we look over to the EVM over subcarrier. We see the little spike here. That's basically the DC subcarrier. The DC subcarrier is handled differently in 5GNR than in LTE. In LTE, it's notched out. In 5GNR, it's up to the uh, specific implementation to handle that one. So what we can do with that is, of course, going back to our configuration, um, signal description again, advanced settings. And then you see here that we uh, implemented a handling feature, ignore it or compensate. For my demonstration, I just simply want to ignore it. And as soon as I've done that, my constellation diagram cleaned up and my EVM uh, versus subcarriers also cleaned up. So this is uh, very easily uh, configuring the instrumentation. Uh, you see here the IF overload button. That's a simple way to get uh, rid of. We need to set the uh, power levels correctly. We can use the auto uh, level power function quickly, and now it's gone. Um, the other thing that uh, the trained eye, the experts in our audience uh, for 5G already caught, is basically if you're looking at our numerical representation of our signal, you basically see here down here, we have a crest factor of 15 dB. So now if I think I'm a, a RF component vendor designing PAs that should go into base stations, a crest factor is a challenging thing. I want to start easy and smooth. Um, and uh, the crest factor here is basically dictated by the cell ID that's being used for the test model. So that's zero by the specification. That's how it's implemented. But if I want to uh, lower the crest factor a little bit, um, uh, I can choose a different uh, cell ID. So for that, quickly, I can just go back into my uh, SMW, choose the 5G and R option again, uh, choose note. Yeah, and you see here it's cell ID zero. I just simply change that to one, for instance. So the signal is uh, recalculated by the SMW now. Um, and after recalculation rec is done, I simply go back to my analyzer and change it there as well, and uh, we will see what the effect is. Uh, the signal configuration itself is not changed, no modulation scheme changed, no allocation is simply still uh, test model 3.1, but now with a different cell ID. So calculation has happened. Um, of course, uh, my signal uh, analyzer lost uh, its configuration in the sense that it has a mismatching cell ID. So I'm choosing signal description again, go into the cell ID and say, uh, please choose one, and as soon as I have changed that, 
my uh, settings are back in uh, uh, matching. And now we can take a look at the crest factor here and see it's significantly lower, 11.4 dB versus the 13.6, 13.7 dB that we saw uh, prior to that when we used the original test model coming from the 3GBP specification. One other interesting fact that we could highlight here quickly is if we're looking at the allocation summary on the FSW, we notice there are gaps in uh, uh, the signal, basically uh, symbols that are uh, not is being transmitted in. Uh, but what I wanted to point out is that you don't see any synchronization signal blocks here um, like uh, um, we have it in LTE, uh, LTE test models. Um, where we use also test models to test uh, functions and features has basically PSS, SSS, and PBCH uh, embedded. 5G and NR, NR doesn't, and we could easily uh, spot that here while looking at the allocation summary. So I hope this shows you that uh, Rodrigo Schwartz is uh, uh, following the specification as quickly as possible. Test models are implemented in both the SMW uh, signal generator and FSW signal and spectrum analyzer for both frequency ranges, FR1 and FR2, and allows you to test base station and RF components um, according to the 3GBP specification.